Hi guys, today I'm here with the Nissan Leaf E Plus Tecca. Now, Nissan Leaf is just the innovation for the EV market, and it doesn't just stop there. With technology leading into race cars and different things, this is gonna be an interesting video to watch. Nissan Leaf was first brought to market back in 2010, so nearly 12 years ago now. But the thing is with this car is it was the first ever mass-produced electric car on the market. So that makes this thing pretty special and Nissan the head of innovative design and technology. The Leaf then went on to win the World's Car of the Year back in 2011 and it's kept developing since then to the car we have today. But not just that, there is six examples of the Nissan Leaf RC Nismo, which we got the pleasure to drive earlier on this year. The Leaf RC Nismo race car takes the battery tech and drivetrain components from the Leaf, with some serious upgrades inside and out, and is an absolute beast to drive. Fun fact, Formula One and Formula E driver Le Mans champion Sebastian Buemi also drives one of these for the daily. Which means it must be good, right? But after 12 years of further design and innovation, the Leaf hasn't stopped there. Now this one in particular does a 0-60 time of 6.9 seconds, and that is thanks to 217 brake horsepower and 340 newton meters of torque with its two-wheel drive system. Now that's quite impressive. And when it comes to the EV side of things, it has a 59 kilowatt hour battery and supposedly gives us 239 miles of range, depending on how you drive it. Testing out on a 125 mile journey with a mixture of motorway, town and country roads with radio and heated seats on, we used up just over 120 miles of range and 60% battery. Not bad. You do have to pay a little bit extra for the three pin plug, but on a 10 amp domestic charger, it will do 0 to 100% in 31 hours. But find a 50 kilowatt charging station and it will do 20 to 80% in just 90 minutes. And with some impressive fast charging times, we stuck with at home three pin plug. The predicted time was pretty accurate and with some overnight charging and planning, day to day life was manageable. The Leaf was actually a lot bigger than what I expected it to be when it first turned up. And as you can see in the boot, there is tons of room to fit your shopping, if you're going on holiday or even just a day out with the kids, making it one of the perfect family cars in the EV market. And not easy to get out of though. And even though you do feel like you're sat quite high up in the back, there is lots of headroom and lots of legroom, and I have long legs. You even get some charging points and heated seats, winner, and plenty of room for a road trip. Now inside is actually quite a nice place to be. You've got things like both speakers, heated seats, heated steering wheel, even things like adaptive cruise control. And you've got all your creature comforts that you would want. You feel like you're in a normal car and not in like a spaceship like some EVs are. With this model having the top level E Plus Techno Pack, we get part leather seats and Pro Pilot, as well as the privacy glass, heated seats and heated steering wheel from the N Connector Pack. There's plenty of storage space and technology including the 8 inch display with Apple CarPlay, navigation and media. But let's head back over to the driver's seat. Because the Leaf was the first EV ever to come to market, it means it's attacked from all directions from competitors. So you've got even likes of Tesla, you've got the Honda E, you've got the Kia EV6. There's so many different kind of competitors that are trying to attack the Nissan because it was the first one with this innovative technology. It hasn't got the price tag or the technology in terms of the screen and stuff that the Tesla might have. But then again, it has the space and the mileage that the Honda E doesn't have. So I feel like there's pluses and cons for every single EV out there. But let's just experience what the innovation that's gone into the Leaf for the past 12 years and has inspired many other competitors to go into the EV market. And with the road to 2030, let's see what the very first car on the market was like. Now with this having the bigger battery pack, you may find that things are a little bit bumpy and that's because it's had to be raised five millimeters. Now we're on a very bumpy back road, so that explains why we are quite 
jerky, which is exaggerating it just a little bit, but on a motorway and pieces like that, you don't notice the difference, which is what 90% of driving tends to be like. Having an EV like this isn't usually for blasting B roads, although the handling is surprisingly good, but I'll get to that in a second. It's more for doing your day-to-day -day journeys, getting to work, going to events, and just having that increased comfort, which actually, it's pretty comfy. With this being the top of the range model, it has some of the latest driving technology, and that's things like the e-pedal, which I find for this on full is very, very strong. But if you notice with all my EV videos, I'm not a fan of e-pedal because I like to be in control. But it does have something like Pro Pilot, which is very, very clever technology. By employing Nissan's highly precise monitoring technology, it controls acceleration, braking and steering to keep the vehicle centred in the lane and maintain a preset distance from the preceding vehicle. You've got all the cameras, you've got adaptive cruise control and it's just giving you that extra help in hand. The steering does feel a little bit lighter but it's very precise with where you put it. The car itself, again, typical EV trait that the battery is really low down which means it doesn't roll as much as maybe a car of this size that was petrol or diesel powered would. So it means that with that 6.9 seconds to 60, you can actually have quite a bit of fun on some B roads, which at the end of the day, we're in a Nissan Leaf. So you can see where the development that went into the RC Nismo race car really came from. It's got race car pedigree. As expected, it is very quiet and mixed with the tires that have been put on it, means that there's not a lot of rolling resistance and therefore not a lot of road noise. It means that you can put your both speakers on, relax, and just, to be honest, just chill out on your journey, which I think with the way roads are in the UK, where there's traffic here and traffic there and not great, but it means you can sit back and actually relax on your journey rather than stressing out, changing gear, using the clutch, having a loud grunty diesel engine noise so if you're wanting that peaceful daily it's the way to go and it also explains why the likes of Seb Bremi has one of these to run around in because if you're all day flat out in a race car and even though he does Formula E now trust me electric race cars are super loud but it means that you can just relax and have that time out away from that full out driving. Nissan have really led the way with innovation on EV technology and the Leaf is just a glimpse of that with what they do behind the scenes and I think the development over the last 12 years because this is a lot better car than obviously it was back in 2010. It means that they are moving with the times and just trying to better everything and the Area, for example is a very exciting newcomer on the EV market. In terms of seating position you do actually feel really high up, but you have to remember you're sat on a battery. But you've got great visibility out of all the windows. They put like a little extra window here, so you haven't got a massive blind spot from the pillar. You've got your mirrors, which are, to be honest, massive, but that's great because you can see everything you need to see, as well as cameras forwards and backwards when you're parking, which for someone like me, who isn't the best at parking, extremely helpful. Like every single car that you drive there has to be negatives it wouldn't be a fair review without them so first up forty thousand pounds or just under is a lot of money for a new car especially when the leaf has that stereotype already but we've got to remember in general evs are still quite expensive because they are new whereas petrol and diesel alternatives you can get second hands that are already a couple years old at a heavily discounted price so I feel like if you put everything into perspective, it's not quite as bad as what you think it is initially. Now, I am not a huge fan of the dash. I prefer a full digital dash because I love a digital speedo. I feel like it's just a bit more precise. But then again, they're looking at the market. Sometimes it's people that are a little bit older and prefer the analog display. Maybe this could be an option Nissan could put in so that you can pick and choose. But every time we go down a road that's not a proper road it goes warning restricted access I'm like okay thanks hon there's probably somewhere I can turn that off to be honest the torque delivery on this is actually really good it can put you back in your seat which means in terms of say you need to overtake something or get out of the way you have the capability to do that which 
it all adds to kind of safety and I know some people kind of say oh speed isn't safe but say you're overtaken and all of a sudden the person next to you speeds up you've got that pull to get you away which isn't a bad thing with the brakes as well it stops really firm with and without e-pedal but the only thing is I feel the feedback in the brake pedal isn't how I would describe a normal pedal to be it's a little bit stiffer at the top end and even though you're braking quite a lot you're only touching the pedal just a little bit when it does still go quite a lot way down that is a terrible explanation but I feel like it's one of those things that you have to try it to understand what I mean it's something you get used to super super quick but what is the overall verdict so to conclude this slightly different review, I think we've really found out that the Nissan Leaf is a massive advocate in terms of innovation and design with the EV market. And it's shown the development over the last 12 years and even pedigree in race cars, the bit I love. The car itself was really comfortable to drive and really simple. And once you got around a few little hiccups, it was a breeze. So with the Road to 2030, looming ever closer it's great to see companies like nissan really pushing the innovation to make a great ev and by then the technology will have developed even further so we're excited to see where that can go but for now you guys know the drill to make my journey your journey like follow subscribe and i'll see you next time bye